So Jeff Ferguson is walking into my office now. He is the partner of Amplitude Digital. He's been in the search marketing space, I think over 25 years now, which is pretty insane to think about. He's worked with massive, massive companies over the course of his years. He's also, I think, an adjunct professor and so forth. So I've known him for a long time. Oh, look, I have no idea what we're gonna talk about, but whatever we're gonna talk about, I'm sure is gonna be super interesting. So I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. All right. Thanks, Jeff, for coming here. Can you my please pleasure. tell people in this camera over here who you are? So talk to the camera this time. You got it. My name is Jeff Ferguson. I'm a head of production and a partner over at Amplitude Digital. I'm also an adjunct professor for UCLA. Cool. All right. And you've been in this SEO search marketing space way, way long time ago. Not to say you're old, but yeah. you probably started when you were 12. Yeah. I am one of the old men of the business for sure. Yeah, it's uh, uh, definitely been kicking around with that. I think it's... I mean, uh, 95 is when I enter, entered the digital space uh, right out of school, um, kind of by accident, like a lot of people did back then. Yeah. Um, I had uh, uh, ended up finishing school with degrees in communications and uh, computer science, and uh, originally I wanted to be a copywriter um, at like an ad agency or something along those lines, and really started applying to just about any company I could find uh, out where I went to school in, in Orange County, uh, California. and. Uh, uh, everybody was asking about the internet. Like it just, you could hear them like trying to figure out what it was. They didn't know what this thing was. Did what did I know about it? And um, I obviously like played with it a lot, um, you know, in, in college and and uh, you know, still that back then it was mostly text based and everything like that. And um, um, and you know, was just very honest with them. And this is like I, that's not my expertise yet. This is, this is what it is. And um, I got my first uh, uh, invoice for my student loan. And uh, the next job right interview I went on, I said, I know everything about the internet. I am I am an internet expert. And uh, um, as punishment for that lie, I, I got the job and <laughs> had to run out and go buy a big book on HTML and and uh, and became that uh, this little company called Alpha Micro, which doesn't doesn't exist anymore. And, and uh, Became the first webmaster slash um, uh, marketing associate that was like focused on that kind of thing, and uh, it's been about uh, just shy of three years there, about three years, whatever it is. Uh, so from like ninety five to about ninety eight. Yeah, and you know, so it's right during the boom kicked in. Uh, they actually weren't much of an internet company in the beginning. They they actually used to make um, this weird old school hardware that was for. Um, like dentist offices and, and school lunch programs and things like that. Uh -huh. And then one of their engineers came up with uh, basically a, a scraping program for the internet where it could actually like steal information off web pages. And it was before anybody was really uh, thinking things through on that front and said like, well, you know, that that's actually probably stealing or that's probably not the way to do it. And uh, he was able to like take that and then cough it into other programs and, he, and they started creating all these other programs. It was really just stealing data from other places and, and uh, they put the thing to market and uh, you know, um, because it was internet related, uh, this company that was like a penny stock before like skyrocketed and suddenly we were like in the, it was part of the boom, this this weird little company. And, and uh, um, that's really when I started going to a lot of the trade shows and everything. It was actually remembering fondly. My first trip to New York was in 96 for Internet World mm -hmm. um, out here with over to the Javits Center back when uh, back when the show existed at all. But it was... Uh, and uh, yeah, it was it was pretty funny. We we worked booths and did all kinds of fun stuff. But I was also, you know, the early forms of SEO before it really had a name. And and uh, I think I used to call it organic marketing back then. It was just you know whatever made sense to get it. And Were you on those old forums, online special forums? Yeah, I was, was like kicking around there. Or? Yeah, I was, it, just about anything that was that was kicking around the time. I, I actually my memory stinks on which ones, but it was like anybody and anything that was talking about like what you actually had to do to to make these things work and how to get on them. And most of them were still very much directories at that point. Um, so there, you know, there wasn't a, a ton of like actual SEO as we recognize it today, but it was, uh, you know, it was, it was there. You were definitely playing with search engines back then and, and right. could tell already that this was going to be just a major part of that scene uh, from the get go. But, yeah. 95 is super early. I think only a few recognized people were in the space then, like mm -hmm. maybe, maybe Danny Sullivan then, Detlef Johnson, um, Jill Whalen, maybe? I don't mm -hmm. know. Some really, you know, some of them are retired. Are you retiring anytime soon? Yeah, I'm planning on it. Yeah, the, uh, uh, it's a form of retirement now, I guess. I mean, owning an agency, uh, you know, it certainly has the, those times when it looks like retirement, but it's really not. And, and no. uh, um, But teaching is, uh, is like part of that. I guess it's part of the, the 2.0 plan uh, right. for that kind of thing where, uh, you know, I'm not going to go quietly anytime soon, but it was it's something where I'm going, oh, okay, that could be what it looks like. I guess. <laughs> Maybe sure. more writing, things like that. But, so you have a, you've been in a lot of companies, and we should probably talk a little bit about what the difference is working like in house at a company versus 
having your own, but let's talk about some of your history. So you worked at some companies like the Hilton, Kimberly Clark, Napster. I remember Napster where I was literally like, everybody was downloading as many songs as possible. Right. And then it became illegal, so they gave us a certain timeline, and everybody's like, "Oh, we gotta download all the songs we possibly can before it's too late." <laughs> before the uh, it was the uh, how was it work, working at Napster? That must have been crazy. It uh, it was interesting. I mean, I was I was technically part of the team that was was when it was becoming legal um, at that point, and and, um, um, and oh, so we you had some, there in the boring times. Like yeah, that. it wasn't. Yeah, we were at this point, but it it presented some really like interesting challenges because the, the the world still thought we were that old Napster for the yeah. most part of it. Um, and so, you know, we had to develop plenty of content with the idea that like, you know, that this is, this is legal. And you know, the, uh, um, the, you know, the IRS isn't going to kick down your door or anything time soon for stealing music. It's totally fine. And, and uh, matter of fact, we even charge for it now. Here it is, you know, and, and uh, it was, uh, it was kind of trip, but um, it presented some really fun, um, development ideas for like a CEO and paid search and some of the stuff and, and it, at that point uh, even like the early forms of social media were kicking in as, as far as a uh, uh, promotional source but uh, I remember I had a really fun time we uh, because everything was technically like in an app for the most part and then uh, most of the other content when they even went to like a web version of the system um, was behind like a paywall whatever it is we had to figure out a way to kind of get that content in front of everybody and i had to convince the engineers to really make an entire like public facing copy of like everything that was in the catalog that would like self-generate and uh, get indexed and, and things like that and it uh, worked like a charm i know we uh, even had some early fun with Google where we could give them a specialized feed and like the songs would show up in special knowledge panels before that was, um, you know, really as popular as popular as it is now. And <laughs> I remember, uh, when I was working on that one, the, uh, like right in the middle of the program, like the, the feed just stopped working, like it dried up and everybody's, you know, nothing was updating, whatever it is. And it turns out that the whole thing with that feed was somebody at Google's like 20% project at the time. It wasn't like just their job. It was just something they were doing as a side thing. And um, and that person like went on vacation or something like it was out sick for a long stretch, whatever it is. And uh, nobody bothered to update it because it really wasn't a big deal. You know, it was just what right. it was. And meanwhile, like it was Napster and, and uh, uh, Rhapsody, which I don't think really existed anymore either. And, and a few of the other players that are still around now, um, you know, we're all like screaming to, to Google, like fix this thing. This is how we get our traffic. This is whatever it is. It's just gone. <laughs> it just like, didn't work anymore. Yeah. yeah. So w why do you leave that company? Or... Um, the, they got bought by uh, uh, Best Buy, believe okay. it or not. And then uh, Best Buy, I remember they came in and said, um, we're not going to lay anybody off. Um, you're just you're going to be here forever. Don't worry about it. Everything's great. Next day. And then uh, Best Buy ended up having the, the its worst fourth quarter in years because it was right when the like the, the 08 kind of like crash was really kind of kicking in around this time and and uh, maybe a little bit before then. But it was a, it was a hard time for them. And they uh, they came back and said just kidding. And they laid off, <laughs> laid off most of the people because they realized they had a ton of people in marketing at, at Best Buy Pro corporate and, and uh -huh. could do it for them. And uh, so yeah, that, that was fine. But that was that actually was pretty okay. They my all my stock vested immediately and and ended up giving me some nice walking cash <laughs> so, uh, that's awesome okay yeah. um and then you have other companies that anything you want to talk about with hilton or kimberly clark or hilton was fun uh you know hilton was was early in my career it was it was uh, not the second company after my first job but it was uh, it was a close one I, I had a small startup that i worked with for a stretch there but uh hilton was another one where that was like the first like really big corporate job I had actually had, and and I was their first um, digital person at all uh, when it came to anything, at least in the advertising side of it. They had a um, like an e-commerce team that was handling the early versions of uh, of actually doing reservations online and things like that. But any of the other promotions and things like that was just me figuring this stuff out in there, and and uh, um, you know anything to do with uh, SEO or paid search or or uh, display or just whatever it is, it was just all funneling through me, and and. Uh, um, it was interesting. It was an interesting time as far as, uh, you know, SEO goes, especially in the travel business. And, and I remember there's just constant, um, you know, kind of back and forth because the, the web team was, was kind of creating this new interface for selling, you know, rooms online, it, you know, as it was just being invented, it was like the first time these things were really happening. And, um, uh, you know, things were constantly breaking from an SEO perspective, they would do something that would just screw everything up. Um, I remember the uh, plus the Hilton is like uh, a large majority of it is actually uh, franchised out. Um, so other owners would do it and be able to update their own pages however they felt like it, whatever it is, and they'd make these major changes and screw everything up. And, and uh, how old, uh, what and, year do yeah. you think approximately was that? That was, um, was it 90, 
99. So it's like pre-Google optimization. Yeah, pretty hardcore stuff on that uh, one. But it was just, the, you were doing the best you could with it. I think the early stages of it, while I was there, because I was there for about three years, um, like uh, paid ads started to kick in in one form or the other on some of the other that early was versions. Find Me? Yeah, some of the other like early ones. And I think the, the, including the one that I think Google bought eventually to make its, its system. But uh, um, but yeah, it was a trip. The, the, and the, uh, it's funny, paid search back then was so funny. It was the, the concept of like having local targeting really wasn't in there yet. So you the only way you could target locally was through the keywords themselves. Right. And uh, so it was a matter of like just thinking of every possible keyword, you know, like you know, like uh, you know, hotel near the Golden Gate Bridge or hotel oh. in New York or whatever it is. And, There's and, a lot uh, of gear variations. And yeah, it was it was pretty funny. And, and uh, I remember while I was working there was when um, uh, the whole Paris Hilton um, kind of scandal happened. That was when uh, um, when her tape came out at that that time. And uh, Mr. Mr. Hilton himself actually called me in his office and wanted to know like how bad it was. Oh, you know? like, <laughs> yeah, it was, and uh, and it was just a time where. I don't think everybody really completely understood like the the range and, and the reach of the internet at that point. They were still thinking old school on it, and, and uh, you know, at that point, you know, they were still concerned about like, well, we're going to get the tape back, and we found the guy, and whatever it is. And I go like, it's, it doesn't matter. It's it's everywhere. It's, there, it's just yeah. the way it's going to work now. And, and uh, um, you know, <laughs> I remember him telling he goes, well, keep advertising on the keyword because we there was there's Paris Hilton the, the person and there's Paris Hilton the the hotel and and uh, we you know had it on word but it was off the chart with clicks and all kinds of activity because we were advertising that one then I remember I had turned it off because the uh, the the ROI was getting terrible because we were getting clicks for all kinds of other stuff and and uh, um, he said, "Yeah, turn it back on." Or <laughs> right, <laughs> it was <laughs> put, the, put the good or negative or neutral stuff in the top. That was yeah. early online reputation management for a really big celebrity I big guess. corporations yeah wow. so I, I was there in uh, uh through 9 11 and uh um and then when the travel industry kind of um went down and really suffered because the uh, uh if you remember the uh, the hotel industry actually didn't get a like a uh, bailout a bailout during that time frame so they just kind of were left to like suffer and and um so there was massive cuts at all well, just the, the banks got the bailouts yeah they? banks and i think the airlines i think at the time people but, were uh, flying then um, yeah, well, I mean, afterwards, but... Uh, but well, 9-11 yeah. shut down the air for what? How long? A week? Yeah, but it was apparently enough to, like, freak everybody out and whatever it is. But, uh -huh. uh, but hotels, like, it wasn't a new... And uh, Hilton even lost a hotel that went, and Hilton got destroyed and all of that, mm. too. Most people forget that. That was... Good I assume you're not a everything. fan of bailouts. So. We're not going to get into political <laughs> politics. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. To, so, yeah. also, you worked at um, Kimberly Clark. I don't even know... They're a big brand. I have no clue what they do. Um, they're a paper company, but they're most of the right. uh, most of the big brands you probably know from them is like Kleenex and Huggies yeah. and and little, uh, on the bottom of the box it says yeah Kimberly Clark whatever it is and usually the only time usually people see Kimberly Clark there is you if, go. yeah there you go yeah or if you're in the hospital and you look over because they have a medical division yeah <laughs> zoom in there all right whatever can't see that and uh, <laughs> they have a medical division that's usually where people will be sit there and they'll look over and they'll be like a like a paper wipe or something out of this, right. whatever, and the, that's the only time they'll actually use their their you know their formal name for this type. So of you stuff. worked at that company, and you were focused on specific brands, or you fixed focus on the whole company? -wide? I I, I focused everything. So again, I was the, like the their first in house digital person that they'd had in there, and and uh, it was kind of like anything and everything. They had uh, they had a web team again that was working on kind of stuff, but it was a very technical side of how it all worked. And um, yeah, it was a uh, was another one trip. It was like. Uh, um, I remember that was the, the first time where I had to go through and like wholesale, like fire a bunch of companies that they'd hired before because they were just taking advantage of them. You know, it's like, and I'm not going to necessarily name names of these companies, but a lot of them are still around, but they were like the really big players in, in, um, like paid search or an SEO at this time that were, you know, getting their names out there, whatever it is. And they were, you know, saying, oh yeah, we can do all these things for you. And in reality, they were, um, you know, charging, um, Kimberly Clark, you know, basically uh, for their own traffic they were getting already. Like there was one of the things where like they're a major brand, they were already getting, getting a substantial amount of traffic and the reports would make, come back and just kind of say, look, oh, look at all the stuff we've done for you and they hadn't done anything. And, and I said, well, you're, you're charging these people you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and, and there, nothing was really happening through all of this kind of stuff and they just made it sound like it was magic. It was the early days. It felt yeah. like it was black magic. Everybody in, yeah. still, even today, some people like think it's like black magic or oh, yeah. type of magic or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's always been my, uh, throughout my career and even, especially now as the agency and even as I teach at UCLA, it's the idea is like, I, I just really try and demystify this and take some of the 
the hocus pocus out of it because I, I think it does more damage than good uh, by trying to treat it like that. So, so for many years you worked directly in house at these various companies. Do you ever mm -hmm. work in an agency that wasn't yours? Uh, yeah, for a stretch, I worked at a little uh, company called the Wallstrom Group uh, okay. that was part of the IPG family. Uh, Wallstrom was funny, they, uh, um, they were really uh, started off as like the Yellow Page Group um, inside of uh, IPG. So anything and everything to do with, with classic old school Yellow Pages, that's the ones that actually dealt with this type of stuff. And because they were kind of associated with it and with directories and things like that, they had it actually um, were the first ones inside of that family that were dealing with digital because the yellow pages had digital equivalents at the time. Right. And so, and then suddenly they said, well, yeah, we, now we can do whatever we want and um, uh, basically claim it's like, so they were doing SEO work for them, they were doing uh, paid search work, it was all search, or really what it is. And uh, yeah, I remember I, I uh, got in there was of uh, Kevin Ryan, uh, uh, got me back in there, it was actually how I got back to California after working from, uh, for Kimberly Clark for a stretch and, and uh, um, what's, what's, yeah. up, what's up with Kevin Ryan with this? Uh, you know, I've talked to him in a couple of years. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, but I uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he used to be at the SES shows back in the yeah. day and stuff like that. So. Yeah, he ran that for a stretch and uh, did a bunch of stuff. But he he was actually the one that got me into uh, public speaking and um, everything back then. So I owe a lot of that early days to him. Cool.